I think there's a benefit to having rich and poor live together. It creates an understanding. There are people in my building that, to me, they're uber rich, and then there are people that are super poor, but they're neighbors, and they have to learn how to deal with each other. And there is a humanity in it. It takes a special individual to live in the Tenderloin. I think that people have to strive to not judge a book by the cover, take a chance to, to get to know the people and get to know the situations and the environment. I'd rather be here than any other neighborhood in the city. Um, just because people are uh, always enterprising and, entre and entrepreneurship is vivid, I think. I know some of the best restaurants and some of the best music venues have been accumulating over the last five years here. You don't really get to hear the good side of neighborhoods, you tend to get the bad side. So my worry is it's gentrifying. That, it's a community unto itself, as weird and as scary as it can be outside, for an outsider. Yeah. It is a community. A lot of the violence actually is within their own community. It's not with outsiders, it's not with tourists. Yeah. It's all within themselves. Right? So you start dispersing it, um, I think you lose that sense of, they, they're going to lose that sense of community. And I think that's sad because it's not really fixing the problem, it's moving the problem. I just think the Tenderloin is misunderstood. Like, there are a lot of people living here who are in single resident occupancies. It's like the largest population of small children in San Francisco. And it's just like a welcoming neighborhood for immigrants to come. And I think San Francisco is lacking in diversity.